Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about not a very uplifting topic, diseases, but they're all around us. And as innovators, as people like green thinkers, speakers amongst us, as engineers, as artists, what can you think of a solution? Okay. Obviously, you might think as a biologist, I might be telling you about designing new vaccines, medicines. Today, I'm not talking of that. Uh, my group is very interested in those aspects, of curative aspects. I'm simply talking of a very realistic problem that can be solved, that we have cures around, but we don't implement. Why does that happen? Okay. So imagine a world where if there is any disease, let's say spread of HIV, you know where it is uh, spreading, you know the groups which are more susceptible, you know what action needs to be taken, and you give them medicines that already exist. So I'm not talking of anything unrealistic. I'm not saying let's design new HIV drugs. I'm saying what already exists to increase longevity. Is that happening? Unfortunately, no, despite resources. Now, imagine spread of dengue, which happens in India often. Do you think we should be in a position to tell where it's spreading? Do you think we should be able to identify which groups are being affected and make them aware? Now, there are various ways to go about it. One is obviously ground level activism. Another is to seek policy help. They're all important. But think what you can do. Let us say, sitting from your hotel dorm, if it has a good internet connection, can you make a difference to the world? Can you start a chain reaction? I'm going to talk to you about a project like that. So, what people have not done in health sector is to analyze awareness in the way people have done in stock market. Let us say, you want to see whether your stock is going to do well. Can you look at Facebook? Surprising answer is yes. The chatter about a particular product is a good indicator of its prices. People employ the tool for even release of a movie. Do you want to look up let us say you're interested in victory of one political party or another. Would you look up what is being covered in newspapers? People do that. Now let me get back to health. Is there a systematic evaluation of coverage, let us say all of, all of India or all of the world? What is being talked about? What are people talking about that disease? Okay. What are people watching about that disease? Is it being covered in serials or is it a taboo? Like if it comes to mental health, are they simply declaring a person insane without realizing brain is another organ? Just like any other organ or body, it can go wrong. So, can we do that analysis? Okay? And should we do that analysis manually? Let's say make an Excel sheet, start tabulating. The answer is obviously no, we can't do it manually. Every day, you have so many newspapers, you have so much coverage. So, what can you do? You have to start with a basic question. What is awareness? Awareness is also related to how you are talking to your friends, your parents, your colleagues about things. Unfortunately, we can't quantify that. We are not at that level of surveillance of government yet. I'm not saying that society is great if that ever happens. But what we can quantify, what are you watching? IMDB. What m movies have you seen? What TV serials have you seen? Okay, so all that database is searchable. Second, what are you reading in form of newspapers, websites? Third, what are you searching? Google Trends, right? Do you search about a particular disease? Okay. Fourth, what are you talking about that disease? Let us say somebody is HIV positive. Are they simply looking to meet another HIV positive people about dating? Something we realize, unfortunately, that's 90% of conversation in India about HIV positive people talking to each other on social media and not other important issues of medicine shortage and all. Can you look up Twitter? Okay. Can you look up even the research output? Is it commensurate? Let us say you are in some part of China and you, <coughs> you are studying a disease which is a very well researched on US and you are following an international trend. On the other hand, in your locality, there is a parasitic disease which you are also not studying, somebody in US is not studying, 
can we find out that gap? So research quantification. Is that research matching is the national priorities, local priorities? The same way about India. Is anyone studying a lot of parasitic infections that happen in East India? Or are they just simply going ignored despite the fact there might be tens of millions of people being affected? All of that can be done, but it needs two things. One is data science, and second is artificial intelligence, which obviously goes hand in hand with data science. So what we have started doing is we do scraping of all the information. Then we use neural networks and train them to classify. And we make an awareness information. And sometimes, shockingly, the news is not good. But the bad news also comes with a good part, actually. Because it, what it tells you that, let's say, government of India has all the resources to deal with HIV better, but it's just spreading those resources for HIV in the wrong places. Okay. So, for example, I'll give you an example of what we found, just looking at things in Times of India Hindu, what people are reading about HIV. The information about drug shortage has gone down to one-third since 2003. Okay, so we are less informed than we were in 2003 about HIV now, because we have somehow gotten complacent about it. Uh, we are now mostly talking of just taboo around it. We are also not talking of novel centers of spread. People's relationship habits are changing. Um, are there more nodal points of spread, spread of HIV amongst youth? We are still talking about spread of HIV amongst truck drivers. How much fraction of HIV total spread do they account for? Less than 5 or 6 percent, right? Where is the ma major fraction of HIV spread? Is it amongst immigrant workers? How many news articles are there in last year? five or ten, you can talk of any of your Bollywood stars, every single day there are more articles on those than those 20 to 30 million people being affected by it. Now what can you do once you have this information? I gave you HIV as one example. You quantify the spread of the disease. That also has two components. One component you can do as engineering students, in fact, Around 3,000 students who have worked with me since I returned to India in 2014, most of them are actually engineering students. They are not PhD students, and most of them are actually interns for five to six months. What we have done is we've taken information from different countries, compared it with information even in WHO. Just because WHO says something, that doesn't make it right. We have all basically asked what is the uncertainty. You can have information from, let's say, a survey in Karnataka, which says a certain number. On the other hand, government of India might give you the HIV number, which is same as just the Karnataka. That cannot be the case, because India has multiple other states. So you take peer-reviewed material, you take government data, you take other surveys, and in some cases, you even conduct surveys on ground. You put that information together and understand one important thing, something that is missing not just in India, even in US, where I spend most of my adult uh, academic career, is that people don't understand data comes with a lot of uncertainties. People like to give you a projection. By 2030, India is going to have economy this size, China is going to have economy this size, this is going to happen. And if you look back at predictions that happened for 2017, 90% of the predictions were wrong. So most people are very happy to predict. In fact, even predicting Future is very difficult. In fact, even extrapolating and predicting past is difficult. You can come up with reasons to account for your bad predictions. When you try to have the data till 2015 and try to predict 2016, most of the cases you'll be wrong. So what we are also trying to do is build in this additional layer of uncertainty, that the HIV numbers could be drastically as low, let's say in some place, from 3 million all the way to 30 million. So you have uncertainty of tenfold, right? and incorporate that into smart policy making, in some cases the uncertainty is less. In fact, when you are even making predictions, different algorithms, different approaches would give you different predictions. Whether it's a simple regression approach, that'll give you one aspect. On the other hand, if you're very using some interesting sophisticated analysis, which is usually not used for disease spread, something like a bubble burst, that might be very suitable to account for an epidemic. So if you use that, your predictions can be better. So what we are doing is making a global map of diseases, 
making a prediction of where it will go, comparing it with awareness. I'm intentionally not showing you scary figures, but what the overall situation is, most of the times we have resources, we're just utilizing them wrong. So my goal, using students, making a team, starting a chain reaction, is essentially to do it for every single major disease. Right now, our focus has been HIV, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. There are other neurodegenerative diseases also, but we are just looking at first these two. We're interested in looking at epilepsy. We're looking at alcohol and nicotine addiction. We are looking at teenage depression and suicide. And looking at all these angles, whether you have, what is the awareness, what are people searching, what, is, what are people talking on Facebook, uh, what are the movies talking about it, what is the information in newspapers, what is happening in a particular state, how many people are suffering, is there a mismatch. Let us say Government of India is allocating resources, turns out that there are more uh, suicides that are happening in Maharashtra than let us say Uttar Pradesh, and if it is spending more in Uttar Pradesh, by taking our data into account, it can make a change in policy and spend the same money in another state where it makes more difference. Unfortunately, we realize that information is not there. We are not saying once information is there, everything is going to be perfect, but at least that needs to be there for smart policy making. And that's what uh, is one of the things that my group is doing. And I hope by doing such a thing, we can start a chain reaction what several big agencies, I mean, even funding agencies like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, like WHO, what these are trying to do is to make a change to healthcare by making these policy changes, by understanding these patterns. But they have not looked at something which has been very obvious. Something which is very obvious is understanding awareness and mismatch between awareness and disease. And that is something I want to do. And I hope that despite sort of being a messenger of gloom and doom about diseases, you realize that I'm not talking about a depressing scenario. I'm trying to find out solutions to a scenario of a lot of diseases around us. And by doing such a thing, we can set up a chain reaction which leads to better health care, better health awareness, better health policies around the globe. Thank you.